Amidst the worst drought in 40 years, Namibian farmers are doing scientific trials on their farms in the northern communal areas of Namibia. How can a farmer who normally produces around 300 kilograms of millet per hectare now increase yields to 3,000 kilograms a hectare and even more? And during the current severe drought, and some are achieving better yields than they have ever experienced before. This film provides a case study of how we do Namibia-specific conservation agriculture. Although most of these livestock farmers tried this for the first time last year during the 2014-15 rainy season, we will hear about their experiences of conservation agriculture specifically designed for Namibian conditions and compare this with their traditional methods of crop farming. In much of Namibia, rainfall is too low and soils too degraded to have zero tillage at this point in time. We have adopted a conservation tillage system using this implement to prepare the land. This combined operation employs Namibian-designed ripper furrow technology to first rip the soil surface and shatter the hard iron pan that has formed just below the surface for improved root penetration and water infiltration. At the same time, the wings of the furrower create ridges. In this system, the edges feed the center. Ridges and furrows improves in-field water harvesting because rainfall is concentrated at the bottom of furrows. 300 millimeters of rainfall becomes 525 millimeters, equivalent to a 75% increase in soil moisture. Crops are planted along these moisture lines. Now we are in business to seriously start growing our crops. Ripper furrowing lengthens the growing season and extends moisture duration in the soil, especially during prolonged drought periods. Even though these farmers experienced the worst drought in 40 years, many got exceptional results. Ripper furrowing creates straight furrows in the field. Farmers use these furrows every year to build up soil fertility and soil moisture. Once a tractor has ripped open the hard pan for the first time, any animal drawn ripper furrower can be used in future. It is important that land preparation should happen before the first rains to enable early planting and to maximize total water harvested during the growing season. Manure is applied in the furrows, approximately 10 kilograms for every 20 meters. Using the same lanes year after year improves nutrients, organic matter and soil moisture. Planting stations are marked out accurately at 20 centimeter intervals with a planting marker in the base of furrows. Maize and legumes are sown one seed per station. When planting millet, a pinch of seeds is added. Early planting is essential to take advantage of the first rains and to maximize the use of the rain that does fall. Because rainfall is so very marginal in Namibia, lengthening the growing season is the key to a successful harvest. Every day lost reduces the potential yield. Conservation Agriculture in Namibia, or CAN, have introduced what is called the 2-2-2 crop rotation system. With two rows of grain planted, next to two rows of legumes, alongside two rows of another grain crop. Grains are either indigenous millet, what we call mahangu, or short season drought resistant maize. The legumes Typically cowpeas, groundnuts or bambara nuts add nitrogen to the soil either side of the grain rows. Each year crops are rotated. So with time, 
soil fertility increases. After germination, farmers check the spacing between individual crops and do infilling. Early weeding and thinning of Mahango seedlings improves vigorous growth. Weeding too late robs these small crops of moisture and nutrients. This mix of organic manure and inorganic fertilizer maximizes plant growth and replenishes nutrients in the soil. When crops are knee high, they can be given a top dressing of inorganic fertilizer called MAP, one bottle top between each plant. At the same time, farmers scout for pests and diseases. Northern Namibia has experienced serious deforestation and wind erosion. Leaving crop residues on the land protects the soil and allows the build-up of organic matter. Here we can see the 2-2-2 system being used properly. These scientific trials have shown how vital good management is. The golden rule for the extraordinarily high yields being achieved is, as always, the farmer's commitments to following these principles of conservation tillage. <laughs> I think over the years, having grown up uh, in the north, and we have always grown our mahango, I've seen that every now and then, like the, the harvest gets less and less. And I'm really happy to have learned to the process of using the Ripa Farawa because I think it will increase yield. This project is very much important because um, it's very much responsive to, uh, to, to the climate change, specifically to our areas here in the North Central. Um, I think it's very much important because uh, people need to have some kind of food security and if they don't change the way they're doing things, obviously they will not be able to have enough food in future. <laughs> Trials over the last 10 years in northern Namibia using this combined approach of livestock farming and conservation tillage clearly shows that the standard of management of farmers more than anything else determines yields. One typical Namibian problem is that weeds need to be tackled with immediacy. Another point that has come to light is the fact that soil degradation reversal now becomes a process, especially in the first few years. 
As these trials continue into the future, there may well be other lessons learned, and alignment with the Ministry of Agriculture, Water and Forestry's comprehensive conservation agriculture program to improve this Namibian developed conservation agriculture system.